Welcome back, aerospace systems engineer. Bailey Burns just conducted a pretty neat science experiment. She tested the hypothesis, can you solve a Rubik's Cube in space, or in this case, zero gravity? Bailey is here to tell us more about this zero gravity attempt here on Earth. Good morning, Bailey. Nice to meet you via Skype. Good morning, Bob. I have to say I absolutely loved your impersonation of a black hole. I thought that was amazing. Was thank, you very, that. thank you very much. I hope I didn't instill fear. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, we also had in the news this morning about uh, Artis, um, Artemis 1, a go for launch mm -hmm. on Monday morning. This very much ties into your work as an aerospace systems engineer. Um, in the story, there's a thing about uh, mannequins actually mimicking soft tissue and organs, and you're working with, you know, how the human body endures in a space environment? Yeah, exactly. So I basically help keep humans alive in space. Um, I do That's like an important job. Removal. I, it, apparently it's a little bit harder than here on Earth. And so when you're talking about what's on Artemis 1 and everything like that, really looking at the metabolic rate is what's really going to be interesting for a lot of us. Yeah, that's uh, very cool. Uh, now, your space ambitions. When are we <laughs> going to see you in space? When are you going to join us on Morning Live from space? <laughs> That's I, I think that's a question I'm asking myself, but that's the goal. You know, I'm, I'm obviously still here on Earth, but eventually I would love to go to space as, you know, kind of this space leader who keeps humans alive and healthy in space, which is exactly what I do here on Earth. Um, and I'm just really looking to have cool experiences here until I can uh, take that step up to space. Yeah, well, you're certainly uh, working in the sector with, uh, I mean, there's so many exciting things happening now and, uh, and so many opportunities for you. But uh, let's talk about your other big interest, the Rubik's Cube. How did you first get interested in it? Um, so my seventh grade teacher just said, a uh, math teacher said, if anyone wants to learn how to solve a Rubik's Cube, come up to my room during the lunch period. And so a bunch of us did. And it was really hard at first, but then I just started getting faster and faster. And now, now it's just kind of like something I do in the background of, problem solving, if I can solve the issues here, I can solve the issues that I'm having with engineering or whatever up here. Yeah, I, I'm sure it's a very good a cognitive exercise thing. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it is, I love it. <laughs> yeah, so um, let's talk about your experiment here in uh, zero gravity. So that was a really interesting experience. Basically, um, I went on a parabolic flight, so it was not space, but when you're on a parabolic flight, it's an airplane that goes in an arc and on the down part of the arc, you're in free fall back towards Earth, but everything's moving at the same speed, which gives you the simulated zero gravity. Um, and I really wanted to see if I was able to focus in enough to solve a Rubik's Cube during this time because you only get about 20 seconds. So at the time, I couldn't solve a Rubik's Cube in under 20 seconds. Um, so this was a big test to see if I could focus in on everything, uh, remove all those external um, distractions and see what I could do. Looks like you had about 50 Rubik's Cubes to solve there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a lot floating around, yeah. <laughs> so uh, th this, uh, what were some of the difficulties, like physically, what was happening? What were the challenges for you? Um, one of the strangest things that I wasn't expecting was that my arms kept kind of like lifting and like I wasn't expecting, there you go, yeah, so I did actually do it. <laughs> and then I fell back down. Um, but yeah, my arms are kind of floating around in ways that I not usually happen when I'm solving a Rubik's Cube on a couch. Um, I was running into people, like hitting my head on the ceiling, just different things that I don't usually have to deal with. So while um, Rubik's Cubes teach really good spatial awareness in the cube, I had a lot of external spatial awareness that I had to get used to. Right, so how many uh, times was the plane doing that parabolic? Uh, did you get a number of attempts? So we had 15 arcs um, and I left myself multiple times to try to do this, but actually that was the first time I tried to do it with a timer and everything. So that was, it worked out perfectly on the first time. I was really lucky. Okay, so Bailey, now that we've got you back at 1G, we're gonna push you to the test on Morning Live. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, I can do that. Okay, uh, on my go? Okay. Okay, ready, set, go. This is a lot um, more nerve wracking a little bit. I feel like there's a little bit more pressure here. Um, um, so Bob, have you ever tried to solve a Rubik's Cube? Well, I buy the knockoff so I can peel the, uh, so I can peel the colors <laughs> off and move them. Done. 20 seconds, yes, <laughs> yes. And that's on live television, which is a lot harder than zero gravity, I'll tell you. It's a lot more pressure. Hey, by the way, Bailey, so you're an official ambassador for Rubik's, so you know, I mentioned about the, you know, the joke about peeling off the stickers, those are the knockoffs. Always buy authentic, right? Get the real Rubik's Cube, exactly. Get one of those, um, and don't worry about messing it up, because that's where it gets fun. 
<laughs> hey, you've been a lot of fun. Nice to meet you. See you in outer space. Bailey Burns. Oh, see you then. Thanks, Bob.